All right. Hey, everybody. Um, we are here to talk about someone who has it's been in the news the last few weeks. Um, Ryan uh, but met news to me, by the way. OK, news that this person to me that this person's in the news all of a sudden. I'd never heard of him before and I'd never heard of him after until you mentioned him. So, you know, that's how up to date I am on pop culture. Well, you had heard of him because you worked on his tour, though, right? Yes. Yeah. Oh no. Ex yes. I had. I had heard of him. That's how I know him. because I was paid. Of yeah. I was brought in as the uh, <laughs> as the front of house engineer, and they paid me my day rate. Right? And they were like, "We need you for the next three weeks until we go to." Uh, they were going to Canada, so I knew I was only committed for the three weeks. And they, um, yeah. I just I remember the first shot was chaotic as fuck, but that's okay. Like they had lost four members of their thing but they still had the merchandise they still had the, like the road crew and all that so everything got built everything got and literally i was just the sound guy put in given a set list and mixed the show you know i was like all right cool i'd had one day's rehearsal fuck it let's roll and uh it was a big uh, it was a big uh, what was it it's a digico the, any sound engineers out there it was a big digico board very very nice board to work on so i had like their engineers show foils so it was all just I was just a buddy, all right? It's not like I'm any magnificent force. I was just a, per a guy working in a factory doing my job. Um, but he had this opener called Karen Ellis, who was this uh, Scottish model. Karen Ellison. Sorry, you said, El you said Ellis, uh, Karen Elson. Whatever. I had, uh, But she was the opener for it, and she was Scottish. So there's the camera. So she was Scottish and I was Irish and like she, she was a cool cat. Um, I don't suppose that you ever met him or interacted with him? Oh, yeah, 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 of course. Uh, you know, he seemed like, a little, like my impression of him was he was a little shit uh, and a bit of a bit, bit difficult, you know? I, like, a I, prima I donna? got there. Yeah, kind what? of a prima donna? A prima donna? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Not, not an alpha male by any of the stretch of the imagination. Like a, like a, like a, like a frustrated kind of... Um, uh, or not Napoleon complex, what would be, yeah, just a frustrated person. Like anybody, like a lion doesn't have to tell a fucking sheep it's a lion. You know what I mean? It's a lion. And so with somebody, uh, that was my impression of him. So it was a little, little dick, you know? Just to kind of give you the rundown on what we're, what we're talking about here. Um, in, uh, in 2019, I guess, I don't know if you know this or not, but Ryan Adams was married to Mandy Moore, the, uh, the former pop star, kind of Britney Spears wannabe. Uh, and he was married to Mandy her. Moore, the, Mandy the big, Moore. The, she, she has size 11 shoes. Don't ask me how I know that. <laughs> yeah, man, Mandy, I know, I know Mandy Moore. Well, right? Oh, yeah. Uh -oh. Um, and so I don't know if I should delve deeper into that or not. Maybe, maybe at the end. That's what uh, she said. <laughs> So anyway, he, he was married to Mandy Moore for a while. Well, here's the thing. From the reading that I've done, nobody, including he himself, disputes the fact that he could be a prick, that he was, like you said, insecure. That, uh, it, but, but the thing is, he really, from what I've read, it's not my type of music, but he has really been a very prolific, uh, and, uh, prolific songwriter and also collaborator. He's actually helped launch the careers of a number of women, such as, well, like Phoebe Bridgers, for instance, that we're going to talk about, talk about in a moment. And so here's the question, basically. So in, in 2019, uh, the New York Times ran a story, and, it, and this is the title of it. It says, Ryan Adams dangled, dangled success women say they paid a price. And so what this is, is it's an expose and it delves into the rom some of the romantic relationships that Ryan Adams had with singer songwriters and, and people, including Mandy Moore, his ex-wife. And basically the, I'm going to read it to you, but the, the thrust of the article is that this guy would, would basically entice women with these projects and then, and, and try to get a romantic relationship going. And then when the romantic relationship didn't pan out, they, they, they claim that he would drop them or that he stalled their careers. Now, where it gets complicated is that when you actually look into it, and this is part of his rebuttal, is that actually like, you know, after he and Phoebe Bridgers broke up, he actually did release a number of her songs on his label and she did open for him at some of his shows and he did, he did write a great review of her album and stuff like that. So it's kind of like what you were saying with Karen Elson. Uh, you know, some of the crew members talking about how he was kind of dangling stuff in front of her, but it seems like he actually did he often did follow through. So that's where it starts to get a little muddy. But what I wanted to do is read through this article, just 
some of the main points, see what you think about it. We'll go through, we'll talk as we go through and just understand that this article canceled him, his career, yeah. his, his record label. After this article came out, his record label uh, dropped him, his manager dropped him, his Ugh. publicist dropped him. Like he basically Ugh. got the Marilyn, the Marilyn Manson treatment. And oh, so, yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's the problem that I have. Like, I have no problem believing that this guy was, was an asshole and uh, whatever it was you called him earlier, a good term um, and, and had some issues. But the problem is, is if we're going to, if we're going to hold musicians and, and artists, entertainers to that standard that they can't be assholes or they can't ever be sort of manipulative or whatever, like we have to cancel almost everyone. So I don't understand why this guy, it seems like he almost had some bad luck getting singled out here, but let's, let's. I mean, can I, can I say something? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Talk. Just, just for an example, last night I had a girl tell me that her TV was broken all this shit. And for whatever reason, we don't have to go into, I said, Hey, okay. I tell you what, your TV, you need a new TV. I'll buy you a TV. All right. Just stop the fucking, stop the shit. You know what I mean? She was having a bad day, whatever. Her boss is an asshole. I was like, all right, look, just stop with the dra- with the mellow, dramatic. I'll buy you a new TV, okay? And so after that, she goes looking for TVs. And then she changes. Then she decides, oh, hey, instead of a TV, can you just give me the money and I'll go shopping for some clothes? Uh, I, I was like, no, that's not how, that's, that's not what I offered, honey. I, I said, oh, you were upset. You're having a bad day. I said, I'll buy you a TV. You know what I mean? What's, what's, what's three to 500 bucks between friends? All right. We're not going crazy here. And she was like, yeah, but if you give me, if, okay, say it's 500 bucks. How about you buy me a 300 TV, $300 TV, and then give me $200 to buy clothes. I was like, hang on. Just, this is, this is getting, uh, just, I said a TV. You're, you're diluting what I offer now. And then she turned it around within very short space of time. Like now she's berating me and calling me mean. And like say, I won't repeat the things she's saying to me because I don't want to put it out there into the universe. Um, but it was like I was just like, hang on a second, how, how am I the bad guy in this situation? I just offered to buy you a TV, you know what I mean? Because you were having a bad day, and now I'm being told I'm an asshole because I won't give you the cash so you can go shopping for clothes. So I can see a little bit in what you're saying here, where if your man Brian Ryan, whatever the fuck the guy's name, Ryan Adams is saying uh oh hey i'll help I'll, I'll write some songs for you i'll put you i'll let you open for my show and all that i'm gonna help your career and then he does that and then it doesn't have the impact that everybody was maybe helping that it would you know what i mean that's not his fault you know that's not that's not his gig you know he did he if, if you do the thing if you do the thing that you offered to do that's you you know being a man of your word you know in the very least so I wouldn't like to think that even if somebody is a bit of a prick, that they don't just get taken advantage of in a situation like that, where it's like, hang on, I wrote you a rich a hit song and I produced it and I, you know, you let you let you use my studio and my staff. I put it out for you on a label and then I got you to open for me. I'm sorry you're not, it's not taking off for you, but that's not my fault, you know? So I feel, I mean, already on the, on the offshoot, if the, these girls are accusing them of shit, and he's been cancelled for things that he actually did, you know. Like, I like, I'm, I'm, I'm proud that he, I'm glad that he did write an album and write some songs for that other girl, you know, and got into a relationship with her, you know. She was chasing him for long enough, you know, or at least he was getting her to chase him for long enough, you know, because like this prick, he'd have like girl, a selection of girl groupies, you know, at every goddamn show, and then at the end of the show, depending on his mood, he might be like, oh, you know. Karen Ellis can stay on the bus tonight or she can't, you know, or maybe it's the groupies, you know? So it's like this fucking guy's living like a goddamn king. Well, and, and so I, let's just, I, I, yes, I agree with you on that. And I think that it starts to get really murky when we talk about musicians who are collaborating, but also hooking up and stuff. And I, and I, I almost get the, the, the sense that the expectations that these women had, whether we're talking about, I can't speak so much about Karen Elson. I don't know. You know, she, she didn't come forward with much of anything, except she said that she had had some quote traumatic experiences while she was dating him, but then she deleted that tweet. So I don't really know. And like, she's had like, she deleted the tweet. Deleted the tweet. And and when she's had, like I said, her history with like Jack White, where like she filed a restraining order against him, but then he took her to court and showed where she had been. Actually, she had been deceptive in that restraining order and she had put some fake, some false stuff about him in the media. Like, I I mean, 
women aren't women are very capable at you know like uh, let's not think for any second that they, this is the like they you know she's not like a damsel in distress by any stretch of the imagination she's a scottish woman mother of two in her 30s or 40s whatever the fuck she's a capable well connected she's been on the cover of vogue i don't know like a couple of times you know and uh yeah she's powerful she has agents she has managers and she has her own uh, gravitas you know what i mean like she lived in the fucking Chateau Marmont up the street for three months. Do you know how much money that is? You know, get the fuck yeah. out of here. Yeah. So that's the issue and that I have with some of with this and we're, and especially with Mandy Moore, I have real issues with, I, she basically used the New York times to take down her ex-husband after, after they had had a, an, a, a after they divorced and gone their separate ways. I just think it's really spiteful. And I don't like the sort of, infantilization of like oh i was just this you know this this passive person manipulated by this guy it's like well no you were in a complicated relationship with a musician and yes you were hooking up and you were also collaborating and maybe he didn't give you as much mileage in your career or do as much for you as you wanted okay so this is again this is the article that uh, took down ryan adams career came out in february 2019 it says for nearly two decades ryan adams one of the most prolific singer songwriters of his generation and honestly, he is a workaholic. Like, I, again, I don't know his music or appreciate it, but from what I've read, like he is, he has done a ton of work, a ton of music, but anyway. Um, okay. So it says, um, it, it, it introduces him, talks about how they won all these Grammys and everything. And then it says here, it says, some say now that Adam's rock star image masked a darker reality. In interviews, seven women and more than a dozen associates described a pattern of manipulative behavior in which Adams dangled career opportunities while simultaneously pursuing female artists for sex. Now, this is what I don't like, first of all. It says that he dangled career opportunities while he simultaneously pursued them romantically. I think that's probably pretty normal. And they almost make it sound like uh, it's a, and they describe it later as a kind of a bait and switch. But again, if these people have gotten opportunities from it, then I, I don't, I don't really understand what the what the big problem is. It says also in some cases he would turn domineering and vengeful uh, when these women would break up with him. Well, again, domineering, vengeful. Like, can you give me specifics? A lot of effort, a lot of effort for a busy rock star to be domineering and vengeful. You know. You no, know, it's interesting that you said that because in his, uh, he did an interview uh, yesterday that came out yesterday with LA magazine. We'll talk about it a little bit at the end. And one of the things that he said is he was like, yeah, I, of course I've, I've been an asshole at times, but look, I've been really busy. I don't have time to be this like super villain that I'm being made out to be here. So <laughs> this is it though. <laughs> this is it. You know what I mean? It's like, hang on. There's literally 10 broads outside lining up waiting for me to fuck them. Do you think I give a shit about you? You know? Okay, you don't want to sing the song that I just wrote for you. Fine, see you later. You know? Oh. Yeah. So here, let's talk about Mandy Moore. This this annoyed me a lot. Uh, it mm. says, mm. ex-wife Mandy Moore. He says, from, mm. a teenager, from a teenager in a small town to his ex-wife, the singer and actress Mandy Moore, these artists said Adams exploited and then stifled their ambitions. Quote, and this is a quote by Mandy Moore, quote, music was a point of control for him. Now, I don't know what she means by that because she never explains it, but this is like the word, this is what they're starting their, their article with is this big accusation that music was a point of control. It's just very silly. Um, and and then before they get into the Manny Moore stuff, they bring up this really inflammatory allegation that he was corresponding with a female fan who was uh, underage. But what they don't, what they don't get say here, what they don't emphasize is that she repeatedly told Adams that she was 18. She repeatedly lied about her age and she was doing music. This, this teenage fan was doing music in clubs in New York city and she looked older than she was. And if you, and the text, that have come out since then between her and, and Ryan Adams, um, you know, the FBI investigated, did a full. Jesus, invest he got investigated by the FBI. FBI investigated him and investigated these texts and their conclusion, what they found, this ended up coming out sometime he later. He pissed somebody off. He pissed well, somebody so off. Just to, just to finish here, he, it ended up coming out later that, um, that 
the FBI dropped the ch- that the FBI did not pursue in, uh, charges because the girl had misrepresented herself. Brian Adams in the text, he even kept asking her, how old are you? And she kept telling him that she was of age. So this is something that I have a big problem with is the New York Times puts this, it, you know, makes one of the main allegation in this article is that he had this inappropriate text relationship. They never met, but text relationship with an underage fan. And it turns out that's all a bunch of BS. And the, and the underage fan ended up releasing her own statement sometime after the fact saying, I lied about my age. He didn't know how old I was. He's a good guy. But the problem is all of that stuff comes out after this stupid New York Times article. So his reputation is sunk. Um, did you want to say anything about that before I, I move on to Mandy Moore? No, I mean, just other than, yeah, if the FBI actually had to investigate, he pissed somebody the fuck off. Or like somebody, the somebody FBI got... To, the FBI started investigating after this article came out. So there was such an uproar after this article came out in the New York Times that the FBI felt they had to investigate. So I'm just the part in this New York Times article where uh, they talk about this underage fan, because like I said, the whole thing has been debunked. And what really annoys me too about the New York Times in this situation is that they do several times throughout the article allude to the fact that the girl occasionally misrepresented her age and that Ryan Adams did repeatedly inquire how old she was and stuff. So it's like even the New New York Times, the person who wrote this, the people who wrote this article, they they had access to the text and they knew that it was BS that the girl was misrepresenting her age, that she looked older than she was. She was, she was playing in clubs, uh, you know, late night clubs. She was sophisticated enough to do that. This guy, you know, and and so when the FBI cleared him, one of the things that came out in this, in this article, I think it was the New York post is, uh, is that um, they found no evidence that he had any kind of a history with teenage girls or underage girls or anything like that. Why? I mean, if you, if you had, if you were into that, that's what you'd be into. That's what you'd be doing. Okay, you'd be whatever. Um, but yeah, I'm glad that the FBI cleared them because then that that's good because they don't leave any. If the FBI is looking in, they're looking in at everything, baby. A lot, of, a lot of resources. That's right. And by the way, the FBI cleared Michael Jackson. And someday I'm going to do a video on that because yes, Michael Jackson was not a child molester. But it's the Phoebe Bridgers thing. Uh, it says. Um, It says women in in music say that they were subjected to Adam's intense flattery and a intense flattery and a bait and switch in which professional opportunities would be commingled with sexual come ons. Again, it's this complaint that he's he's hooking up with people as he's collaborating with them. That's music. That's like that happens a lot. The musician Phoebe Bridgers. Now, remember Phoebe Bridgers. She was the one who who came out after the Marilyn Manson allegations and said that when she was a teenager, up and coming uh, singer, that she had hung out with Marilyn Manson. And he and her big allegation was that he made a joke about having a rape room in his house, which was so oh, obviously a joke. And so that was that was her big story. So this is this is someone. Hey, dude, who, this is Hollywood. All right. And a lot of a lot of houses with rape rooms. All right. Come the fuck on. <laughs> Well, uh, and so this is someone, Phoebe Bridgers, who really likes to, for I guess, for publicity to or whatever, to jump on uh, to jump on the bandwagons with these types of things. But anyway, this is what it says. It says the musician Phoebe Bridgers was 20 when Adams invited her to his studio one night. She says there was a mythology around him. It seemed like he had the power to propel people forward. Adams had her perform a song and he said he was blown away. He gave her a pricey vintage guitar and told her to return the next day to record something with him. It says, beguiled by Adam's energy and enthusiasm, Bridgers brought her best songs. He, Adams proposed putting them out as a seven inch final single on his label, setting her on a professional path. But as they discussed the record, Adams started sending Bridgers, this is what she claims, flirty texts, she said, and a whirlwind romance commenced. Bridgers said the singer began discussing marriage less than a week into their relationship and insisted that she opened for him on his European tour in a few weeks. (laughs) So, so far, what's being described to us is that basically Adams meets this sort of uh, unknown up and coming 20 year old singer, female singer songwriter. He's very taken with her, enamored with her, both professionally and it sounds like romantically. And sounds like she knows sounds like she knows how to fucking throw that thing in the bedroom. You know what I mean? Right on. 
And she says they and she says that had, they had this whirlwind romance and whatever. You know, he's an artist. I'm sure that he's passionate. I, you know, oh, five star everything. We stayed at the farm. Out. I stayed. At, this is the first time I learned the, the, this franchise. I toured with Journey. OK, um, was there's this hotel franchise called the Fairmount. I believe that's that's the way you pronounce it. Fairmount. It's like a high end chain of hotels like the Ritz Carlton's, which I've heard of in the four seasons I've heard of. But like the Fairmount's like some next level shit, bro. And so, like, we stayed in, like, these things. It's like, oh, fuck me. This is cool. Like, no, no. He's not only is he a rock star. Like, he's, like, a wealthy. Like, he's, like, class. Like, it's five star. Like, if she's hanging out in a studio with him and going to meals with him and going to, like, bedrooms or hotel rooms, it's all fucking five star shit, dude. Like, when you say world run romance, I'm jealous. I'm jealous. Oh, right. my God. And she gets to stay in all the hotels in Europe. Get the fuck out of here. It's being presented as, as something that's very sinister when really in a different light, it's just, it sounds like two musicians, a sort of age old story of two musicians who are romantically and artistically intertwined. And it's like, he is, he is helping her. You know, I have to say like, you know, quick, I'm not going to tell a long story, but when I was in my twenties, uh, early, well, mid twenties, I had a relationship with a much older man who was a professional mentor to me. And you know what? Like, yes, there was a commingling of, of, of romance and sexuality and also like helping me with my work. And that's not, ne- that's not necessarily a bad thing. And by the way, I was getting a lot out of it. It doesn't, it, this manipulation thing it goes two ways. You don't mean to tell me, look, if we look at a picture of Ryan Adams, no offense to him, but he's kind of a, a schlubby <laughs> little guy. You mean to see that these women? It's like Bono. How the fuck does Bono get Naomi Campbell? Okay, I think he's actually nice looking, but 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 Ryan uh, Adams. Ryan Adams, though, like not no offense to him if he's watching this, but like you know his appearance is not his 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 best trait. And you, you're mean to tell me that these women, these, you know, hot women or cute young women or whatever, they, they're going after him due to like who he really is. No, they want something out of it. And that's fine. That's human nature, but like to rewrite your history now. So let me, let me just finish this story. So it says in the weeks that followed Adam's attention turned obsessive and emotionally abusive. Bridger said Jesus. he began, he began barraging her with texts insisting that she prove her whereabouts or leave social situations to have phone sex with her. Now, look, I, I, we're getting this from like one person's subjective perspective. I, I don't, as I said before in other videos, I don't have reasons not to trust this woman anyway. Uh, but, but if the worst that she can come up with in terms of this uh, emotionally abusive situation is that he would barrage her with texts or he would, he would demand that she have phone sex. Look, that may not be like you, my idea of like the best boyfriend in the world, I guess, but like, that's, that's your big complaint. And so then she says she broke off the relationship and she said that when she did that, Adams became evasive about releasing the music they had recorded together and rescinded the offer to open his upcoming concerts. Well, that's what they say here. But then in like the next paragraph or so, do you know what they tell us? They tell us that he ended up releasing multiple songs of hers the next Uh, year, the next year he released multiple songs and she did open up for some uh, of his concerts. So look, (laughs) what awful writing, what fucking just cunt in reporting, you know? It's bad reporting. And and the thing is, like, it, it's just like earlier in the same article when when the reporter is talking about how he was texting with an underage fan. But then the reporter said, well, she did lie about her age several times and he did repeatedly ask her to clarify her age. So in other words, like you just invalidated your story. Yeah, but he's still a bastard. Don't forget that for a second. All right. Even though she, you just invalidate the story, he's still a man, a fucking man bastard. And listen <laughs> to this next point we have, you know, like, well, fuck off, dude. Well, it's can, I love the way she says he was, I don't mean to cut you off there, but no, the way no. she was saying he was evasive about releasing the songs, even like granted he later did release the songs and take her, let her open up for him and all that. But it's like, oh, hang on. You mean you called off the relationship and then all of a sudden he was like not that interested in having you on his tour or like working on your songs anymore. Does that seem strange to anyone? It's like, no, that seems like a fucking... You just, I, I was really liked you. I really liked you. I was texting you a lot. I missed you. And then you break up with me. So yeah, I'm kind of hurt about that. I'm not going to work on your stuff. Maybe I'll come back to it in a few months, but I got like other shit. To, I got to think of my own happiness and I'm kind of heartbroken right now, you know, or I need to, I got other shit to do. Um, but yeah, I think that's totally one. normal. Like that's yeah. not, 
if you're working together on something, then, you know, that's one of the things about breaking up. If anybody's doing the bait and switch here. It's these fucking broads, you know? Well, and the thing is, is like, yeah, I, I, if, if you're, if you're in a romantic relationship with someone and you're collaborating on something, when you break up, then the collaboration often breaks up too. It's like, if I had, if I were in a business, you know, with oh my, my husband and then we break up and you, then you, you like, those plans are no longer, generally speaking, they, they're no longer, um, they're longer there. So anyway, this is now, and so then they shift to talking about Mandy Moore, and this really irritated me uh, as well. Oh, wait, well, one more thing. Um, Phoebe Bridgers also alleges that uh, when she did end up opening for him on his tour in 2017, that there was one night, uh, that one day where he asked her to bring him something to his hotel room. And when she got up there, he was nude. Now that is all that's alleged. She doesn't allege that he tried to kiss her or move in on her or harass her. All she says is that he asked her to bring him something. And when she brought it to the hotel room, he was nude. Now it's interesting. What's interesting. What did she, what did she bring? What did she bring? Was it a bottle of lube? You know, what was it? <laughs> I don't know what it is that she brought. Did she bring a strap on? You know, what was it? There's a middle image that I, I don't want. Right. Um, well, what's interesting, too, is that in the interview with L.A. Magazine that Ryan Adams did yesterday, they also that came out yesterday, they also interviewed a number of his female roadies. So fe- women who were on his crew and everything. And you know what the what the female roadies said? They wow. said that he almost never slept in the hotel room unless he was ill because he 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 always preferred to sleep on the bus. And they said that he had body consciousness ish- issues and they thought they thought it was very unlikely that he would be like showing off his naked body, you know, to someone that he was interested in. And so the point that they were making in this article, these roadies said that actually they felt like Ryan Adams, his tour was one of the most women friendly because he had more women in his crew among the roadies than most artists did. And that, Uh. and that they felt like these women who worked for him, they felt like uh, his his tour was actually one of the safer tours for women. And so it's interesting because in this article, they were they and they were anonymous because they, they said they don't want blowback from their careers. So these were his uh, roadies, female roadies, anonymous right. talking about it. But what they were saying is that they couldn't understand this because it seems actually uh, it, it seems <sighs> incorrect based on their experience. And one other thing that they said in this article and then you can you can comment. Do you have anything to say? One other thing they said is that they tried when Phoebe Bridgers came out with these allegations. They tried. They had her number because she'd been on tour with him. They all tried to call her and contact her because they said that they had a really tight relationship with her as women, and that she never said anything to them about anything being uncomfortable. That she always seemed like very like happy and pleased with everything, and that. They, they feel like she threw them under the bus by saying that people around Ryan Adams enabled this behavior. And they just wanted to come forward and let people know that, no, we're women, we're feminists, we worked for him, we never saw anything like this, and yeah. we didn't enable behavior. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, now that's the thing that's most insulting to a lot of women, I find, or like to woman, to woman, to the, to the goddess that is woman. You know, it's like, hang on, you bitches... You, you plan all this victim identity politics stuff makes us look bad and makes it gives women this whole like we're, we're incapable and like we're easily browbeaten and controlled it's like hang on a fucking second what about women that are out there fucking lifting and opening cases you know what i mean and like are proud women whether they're straight or they're not straight you know they're living their lives they're paying their bills they're paying down their mortgage they're on the road <coughs> they're missing their families all these other fucking idiots are the ones that are on sofas watching YouTube videos all day, pointing the finger going, what should be right and what should be wrong. And they haven't a fucking clue what a day's work looks like. Sure. Well, you know? And they said, and, and according to what they say, there was a more female, he had more female crew members and it was a, it was a, a more woman friendly place. Uh, it says that, uh, Okay, so then let's get to Mandy Moore again. This is the part that really annoyed me. Uh, So the subtitle of this is A Marriage of Music and Control. I mean, they're so they're so dramatic. I hate I hate that in this article. A marriage easily said music and protection. You know, they could could, could go any way that you want with it. Control. Yeah, that's her narrative. It says even for an artist like Moore, 
now a star of the hit series, This Is Us, so she's now a successful actress, Adams could wield his influence in damaging ways. And, you know, and, and I hate this, how they use all of this really loaded rhetoric that, again, it's, 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 it's empty. It's not really saying anything, but he could wield his influence in damaging ways. When they met in 27, 2007, she was 23 he was a decade older. I hear, of course, they've got to get the age difference in. So it says she was exiting her teen pop years and his reputation, Ryan Adams' reputation as a sensitive, authentic voice provided the artistic credibility she craved. Now, look, this is what is astounding to me. They start, they're starting this, this, this section where they talk about her marriage and basically she's admitting here because they're writing it in her subjective, from her perspective, she's admitting here. One of the first thing that she says is that she's exiting, that it says is that she was exiting her teen pop years and his reputation, his professional reputation provided the artistic credibility she craved. So they're starting off right off the bat. The first thing basically that they're telling us about his marriage uh, their marriage, other than that he was older than her, is that she was attracted to his uh, his professional success and was looking to profit off of it, was looking to piggyback off of it or get something from it. There's no other way to interpret it when it says his reputation in, in the industry provided the artistic credibility she craved. It says in 2010, wow. it says in 2010, Adams offered to work on her next album. When she parted ways with her music manager, Adams discouraged her from working with other producers or managers, she said, effectively leaving him in charge of her music career. Now, heaven I don't forbid, heaven forbid the, the like guy that's known for being a really good writer and having a successful career should be left in charge of managing her career, you know, or guiding her in some way. Heaven fucking forbid. Well, and the way that they're, you know, they're, they're really careful with the language they're using here, but they don't actually say that Adams told her he would be her manager or whatever. I think what they're trying to do is what they're trying to present to us is this idea that Adams swooped in, cut her off professionally from other people, promised her that he would manage her career and then left her hanging. But actually, when you look at the, the writing itself, what it's actually saying here is that she was making a lot of assumptions. It does say yeah. that he offered to work on her next album, but it says when she parted ways with her music manager, in other words, either her manager dumped her or she dumped the manager. All it says is that he discouraged her from working with other people and, and that left him in charge of her music career. It never says he offered anything. It could have been, you know what? It could have been something like, Hey, you know, those people, they're, they're not really very good for your career or, or they're only thinking of, a, of you as a pop person. You, I wouldn't mess with that or whatever. It could have been something even as, 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 as mild as that. And she is making these assumptions that he's going to take over her career and he's going to manage it. And basically her complaint, and I'll, I'll read the rest of it, but her complaint through the rest of this article is basically that he didn't manage her aggressively enough or he didn't push her or promote her enough. And so uh, it's never it's never enough for these fucking whores. Let me tell you, it's never enough. They, you give a mouse, you give a mouse a cookie, it'll ask you for a glass of milk for Christ. Well, and I hate to say this, or, but people people are very naive uh, about how cutthroat the entertainment industry is and how there are <laughs> people who are willing to do And we've talked about this before. I've talked to you about this. I've also talked to, to Paula about this, you know, Manson's ex-assistant. And when you're in L.A. and you're in the entertainment industry, apparently what you discover is that there are all of these people who are very ruthless about their goals and getting what they want and using other people. And to me, honestly, it sounds like Mandy Moore. I'm sorry. Mandy Moore is the one who was trying to use him. You got this yes. shabby, unattractive yes. guy, this beautiful woman, you know, marries him. There's no way she would have looked twice at him if he and, and if he weren't. Have this you ever, it, Mandy Moore. In the, there are few women that can command the attention of a room, okay, in this world. Sharon Stone, Kate Hudson, Mandy Moore. These are women that, yeah, they look good in the films and they look good on the magazines and all that. But when you see Eva Mendes, and when you see these people, these, these gods, not even goddesses, just these entities in person, you're like, holy shit. Yeah, that's a star. That's a fucking star. The level of control and power Mandy Moore would have over him at 19 or 20 would just be unparalleled. He was like 10 years old and the amount of insecurity that he would have had. Yeah, he yeah. was in his thirties. He was like, shit, my career could be over. I got to fucking maybe help some more people produce some right shit and all this kind of thing. I'm imagining that. Yeah. It was very seductive. She was the more powerful one. You know what I mean? 
without and, question. Christ. And again, and that's the thing is there are a lot of people who do not want to concede the kind of power that women have, especially when women uh, are attractive. And she and she was a star. I mean, now you know it's not just attractive. It's there's the physical attraction, but it has to be matched with the mental. There's a way of carrying yourself right. and welcoming people. It's not how you talk to or at people. No, no I understand it's how I'm, they welcome. Right. I'm just saying that there's, I'm saying there's that to, to depict it as she's depicting herself. And as this article is depicting her as being this very sort of like, uh, Oh, I have no power. I have no agency. I'm just basically like been taken over by this manipulative guy who promised me the stuff for my career and he didn't fulfill it. I'm sorry. It's wrong. And uh, so honey, I mean, Mandy Moore in fairness to her, she made her name was known enough in Ireland and I'd never heard of him. You know what I mean? So I'm sorry. I just, uh, my husband just interrupted me to tell me gleefully that Cuomo is resigning. So I guess he doesn't want to have sex, uh, for the, for today. Um, a bit of a kick to the dick, isn't it? Oh, he's taunting. No, he's taunting me. Uh, he hates my, well, that's abusive. That's abusive. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? That's right. That is right. Okay. So let's, let's, let's get back to this. 